Hi there. I wanted to take a second to let you guys know about Pixlr.com. If you're ever in a bind and you really need access to your photo Photoshop tools, but you just don't have Photoshop around, take a look at Pixlr.com. P-I-X-L-R.com. It's kind of a, a Photoshop light. It has a very, very similar interface to Photoshop, but it's completely free and it's completely web browser based. So let's take a look at it. The one I'm interested in on this particular page is Open Pixlr Editor, which is the advanced version. So go ahead and click on that. It'll just take a second or two for this to pop up. And we're going to open an image from our own computer for this particular demonstration. My Web 135 class is going through a um, project. So this is going to be geared towards them. It's called Fun with Fruit. So let me navigate to where I have this stored from, for those guys. There we go. And what they're expected to do is to take this photo called Fruit and extract the different elements to make it into some kind of photo. Uh, to make it, excuse me, make it into some kind of larger graphic image. What we're going to focus on is how to use the selection tools inside Pixlr instead of using Photoshop. So here's the first thing. Let's get, let's get used to the interface. Over on the left hand side you'll see many of the same tools that you find inside of Photoshop. The ones that we're going to be focusing on are the marquee selection. In particular, not the square one, believe it or not, the rectangular or elliptical marquee. And then also that magic wand. On occasion that comes in handy, but I've really found in this particular instance, the elliptical marquee is going to be our go-to instrument. You're going to create a new file because we need to have something to paste into. Go up to File, New Image, and I'm going to leave this set at 800 by 600. Whatever your project requirements are, use those, um, those pixel settings here. And let's call this uh, Project 1. And a transparent ca canvas is just fine. You also do have an option of changing the width or height to be a custom, custom setting. So click OK, and it goes into a new project for me. Over on the right-hand side, you have some more of the traditional Photoshop tools. The one I'm particularly interested in is layers. These other guys I don't care about right now. I'm just going to get rid of them. And this, I want it to be much better bigger. So I'm going to click on that right corner and do this like this. Okay. Kind of arrange these where you can see them pretty well. The first thing I'm going to go after is I'm going to go after, let's go after this big melon. Grab your marquee tool, change it to elliptical marquee, and you're going to have to click off of it just a little bit and get the general overall shape of this melon. So let's have a little too tight. You see right over here on the right hand side. So I'm just going to hit delete. Uh, let's see. Deselect. Control D. Okay. And then I'm going to try it one more time. Make it a little bigger than what you need. And then you can release and drag it over the top of that melon. Now this is not going to be perfect by any means, but here's where your Photoshop uh, keyboard shortcuts come, into, come in handy. If you hit Command or Control C to copy, you can also go up to Edit Copy. That is just fine. I'm going to go over to my new canvas and I'm going to paste by hitting Control V as in Victor. Control V. There's my melon. Now the thing about this is that I know that I've got some white spots. So let's see if I can change my background color just a little bit here. Yeah. Okay, so what I did is I grabbed the bucket tool, my color is set to white, and I just changed the background color to be able to illuminate the problems with the selection. So what I would do at this point, because I know that the photo I want to do is um, it's more intricate and my images are going to overlap each other. I'm going to grab the eraser. 
so I can get rid of this white nastiness around the edge here. Okay, now this is not going to be perfect. Oops. Got to make sure I'm in the right layer to do this. And I'm seeing that the tool is a little too soft. I want a harder edge. So I'm going to hit Control-D. If I'm on anything but a Mac, hold on just a second. Excuse me. I have to go up to edit and actually undo. Okay. So I need to change my brush a little bit. Up here in the upper left-hand corner, I can see that I've got a very soft brush. We need to change that. So let's do that. Come down. I'm going to put my hardness up to actually 100. Here we go. So let's try this a little bit better here. Yeah, that's the stuff. Yeah, like I said, not perfect, especially because I'm trying to do this with a mouse, which I'm guessing that most of my Web 135 students are also trying to do. Okay, so what you would do is you would carefully keep going through this and try to get rid of as much of that white as you possibly can. Another alternative is to come over here and grab the Magic Wand tool, select the white, delete, and you're going to have to do that many, many times. You can even zoom in, come down to the lower left-hand corner. Let's go in, how about 300%. I'm going to hit the space bar on a, never mind, Wrong program. <laughs> I need to grab my hand tool. Let's move this guy down a little bit. I'm going to go back and get the magic wand. So I hope this is making sense for you guys. I'm going to set my tolerance up a little bit more. See if I can get more of that white. So right now it's not giving me a whole lot. Uh, it's too far. But do you see what I'm doing? I hope you do. Okay, deselect all. So I would probably just have to keep going with my eraser, which is not a lot of fun, but it is possible. Just try not to take off too much of that melon, okay? Another tip for my Web 135 guys would be to keep this on some kind of white background, but don't let that be the, the only thing that you do, because I do take a look at how close you get in here for the selection. Okay, not perfect, but it's better. Now I'm going to go back out to 100% and see what that top part looks like. Yeah, it's a little jagged. Okay, but there are other techniques you can use too. So that's one idea for one of these particular guys. I want to show you something that has a flat edge. Let's go back up here. I'm back on the fruit layer. I I've grabbed my elliptical marquee again. I'm going to go after this. I think, what is that? Some kind of blood orange or something like that. Again, I'm going to get the general shape as close as I can. And then simply reposition the marquee. Hit Control C to copy. Come back over to Project 1. Control V to paste. Notice that it automatically creates a new layer for you. Now let's take this up into the left. Okay, so that one's not so bad. So I would probably have a lot of these images rather than the melon images, if that makes sense. Now, what I don't want is down here at the bottom. So let's think about a really creative way we can get rid of that bottom part without a lot of effort. And I'm thinking, I'm gonna go to my marquee tool again. This time I'm gonna choose the rectangular, come back to the same layer, Simply click and drag and hit delete. There you go. Excuse me for that. Sorry about that, guys. Wrong program again. So let's deselect. And now I can go back in with my eraser. This one does work. Hit E for eraser and get rid of just a little bit of that white to the side there and up there. That's better to me. Okay, so this looks pretty good. You can do the same thing over here with your, um, excuse me, can't, <laughs> having a hard time talking and do that. I'm gonna go get that Kiwi. Again, another elliptical marquee about the size that you need. Drag it up. 
control, go over, hit paste. Okay, so I'd have to work on the outside edges of that guy a little bit more. Same thing with this guy. I actually did this one earlier. It wasn't too bad. I did find that I had to do a combination of, um, you know, erasing and uh, using the straight marquee to get the bottom down here at night. Okay. Well, that kind of gives you an idea of what you can do. I would stick with, with shapes that are very round, okay? That'll really help you out and um, work with that eraser tool. And then once you have a nice clean image, protect that copy by, um, by making a duplicate of the layer and never touching that layer, okay? Because you don't want to go have, you don't want to have to go back and do the same kind of work twice. Well guys, I hope this helps. I hope the little tutorial and um, using Pixlr in a pinch made a lot of sense and I wish you the best. Take care. Good night.